Welcome to the latest edition of our AT Carney Procurement and Analytics Solutions, the Wave of the Future podcast series. I'm Helen Clark, and I'm joined today by John Piatek, a manager with AT Carney based out of our Chicago office. The topic of today's podcast is commodity risk management. The current unstable economic environment is a challenging one in which to operate, with volatility and uncertainty in almost every corner of the globe. Given this backdrop, companies sourcing commodities need to have a strategy in place that includes risk management so that they're ready to move and change tack if need be. John, thanks for joining me today and welcome to the podcast. So there are many risks in procurement, supply risk, financial risk, volatile pricing, foreign exchange risk, et cetera, et cetera. I want to talk with you specifically about commodity risk management, managing the risk of sourcing commodities from around the world. John, why is commodity risk management such a hot topic and why is it a focus area for business today? Thank you, Helen. We have all probably seen one of those line charts that seems to show us on a never-ending cycle of commodity price increases. In reality, while prices are high, they are still in line with historic levels. However, the underlying volatility is at an all-time high. Multiple forces are causing commodity price volatility to challenge including speculators, changes to demand from emerging markets, increasing scarcity of resources, weather, and more. Our clients find that commodity risk can really impact the bottom line, requiring a new focus on commodity risk management. So John, how are companies investing in defining a commodities risk management strategy? And what problems are likely to occur if companies don't bother with such a strategy? We see lots of different approaches in the market from companies that take very little action to companies that form a full trading house in a tax favorable country and use transfer prices of commodities uh, back to the underlying core business. The key is to understand the risk tolerance or risk appetite of a company and set up the organizational capability accordingly. On the one hand, doing nothing is the highest risk. To ride the market is an approach that does not actively hedge or manage commodity price fluctuations. On the other end of the spectrum, we see businesses adopting a very conservative approach. This is where they'll have a simple commodity risk model with a basic structure. They'll use physical hedging strategies or financial instrument strategies to drive high price certainty. We then will see companies this try to strike balanced approach where they're trying to have price certainty but also taking advantage of opportunities at markets that may present themselves. And on the more aggressive side are the companies using those trading house organizations where they are forming a strong trading capability and have a high use of complex financial strategies and are possibly open to speculative positions. Now, John, I know that you've developed a model for managing commodity risk comprising a number of elements, including strategy, governance, process, people, reporting and tools. Can you tell us why you developed this model and what elements um, a really good model should comprise? A.T. Carney developed a commodity risk management framework to understand what are the different stages of excellence from each business and understand at what level of maturity do we start to see businesses deploying their skills against a market framework. Uh, within this framework, you have different elements, such as the overlying strategy, the scope and risk tolerance and objectives, the governance and structure, process, people, and then the reporting and tools. And within each of these elements, we have some different components. Uh, if you consider first the scope, risk, tolerance, and objective, this is where we're talking about understanding where commodity risk management will be employed and how. The CRM strategy piece has to understand what the different strategies that can, business will be deploying, what thresholds or degrees of freedom they will give to the people in the business to deploy those strategies, and the method by which scenarios are evaluated. When we talk governance, we're referring to sort of the governance levels that are needed, the team compositions, the decision rights given to those teams, and then the meeting frequency by which they regroup. Uh, within the processes, explains how the CRM activity is deployed, everything from a roles and responsibilities to escalation mechanisms. People element has to look at the performance management and success management and training development given to the people participating in commodity risk management. And the reporting and tools piece, finally, uh, hat refers to the data and rep reporting aspects of commodity risk management. What about the different strategies available to companies to manage their commodity risk? John, can you illustrate each strategy with an example? 
Yeah, there are four primary strategies any business has to mitigate the risk. The first is to transfer the risk to a supplier in which we lock in prices with the supplier during a specific amount of time. Uh, we're using our purchasing power to require suppliers to share this risk. Or we are alternatively directing suppliers to take positions or hedge the risk on our behalf. The second strategy is to hedge the risk, which is a financial strategy. We can use financial instruments to take positions in the marketplace, and this is especially appropriate for liquid traded commodities. A third strategy is to deflect the risk. So we can pass cost increases to a customer or to a consumer in the form of higher prices. We can alternatively adjust specifications or supply sources to achieve that lower cost. Finally, we can operate the risk, which is a company strategy to stock up on inventory or to take higher upstream ownership possession, depending on the commodity in question. We do also expect all companies to evaluate all four strategies simultaneously and understand the impact of market price forecasts, confidence we have in these forecasts, and then the resulting risk plan. So how does a company work out which strategy is the most suitable for it to pursue? What information is needed to determine the most suitable strategy? There are two key questions to answer in order to understand what's the best strategy to deploy. The first one is, should we risk manage? We only have so much resources we can deploy to commodity risk management. We need to therefore prioritize our activity. We can look at the commodity spend, the overall commodity volatility, pockets of geographic specific volatility, and the overall margin impacts. And this will help us understand, is it worth our time to do? Second question we should ask ourselves is, can we risk manage? Certain markets are closed for risk management strategies when financial products may be unavailable, the supply market is unwilling to transfer the risk, there are no volume advantages, or we lack the specialized skills or knowledge that we don't have in-house to execute the strategy. By answering the questions, should we risk manage, and can we risk manage, we know which strategies we should start to deploy. Okay, so it's all very well having a strategy in place, but what about when those types of disasters occur that no one can foresee. I'm thinking of the major market disruptions like the tsunami that happened a couple of years back in Japan. What happens then? Tell me about the special escalation process or black swan process that you've incorporated into the model. I was reading about that. Can you explain that a little bit more? A black swan process is a practice that we see leaders adopt as part of their overall commodity risk management programs. A black swan process, by definition, is one of those unpredictable market events that is fundamentally causes a disruption to the supply. This could be either a positive or a negative, in which there's an opportunity, a very narrow opportunity, to take a supply strategy to either mitigate a price increase or take advantage of a supplier who's interested in selling. These are very rare situations where often the decision-making is sort of paralyzed by the unexpected nature of this event, where typically a business has an opportunity to take steps to secure supply or to, depending on the opportunity itself, or the event itself, rather, buy commodities at a more favorable rate. Often there's a very narrow window by which to operate. There's not enough time to run through a full process to engage all the stakeholders but without an agreement up front on how a black swan process will be managed, management will be unaware of how to react, and more importantly, who should be taking these actions. We therefore see uh, leaders adopting black swan processes formally and in embedding that into their overall management of the area. Okay, so basically every strategy for commodities risk management should have this black swan built in so that if there's a natural disaster or some uh, disruption to supply, for example, the uh, company can react very swiftly. Is that right? That's right, Helen. It's an aspect of governance, really, in the sense that in when these events are happening, there's not enough time to engage the full stakeholders to right. have the discussion, and instead we need to have someone nominated on behalf of this wider group to take action. Well, John, that leads me nicely into the next question, because I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about governance and the role that governance plays in the model. So how can a company best implement governance? You mentioned it as part of the framework, and I expect that it's quite important. Can you talk a little bit about that? Given the potential impact of commodity price increases, 
governance is really important. And there are four elements of a good government system. One is the number of levels that exist. The second is the composition of the team members at each level. Third is the decision rights given to these teams. And then lastly, the meeting frequency by which they meet. We typically see a governance level style that's consistent with the overall size and structure of the business, typically one, two, or three levels, with core roles defined very explicitly for each participant. The participants themselves of the session typically come from the operations or the budget holder group, typically a procurement or supply management representative that is responsible for procuring the raw material. Finance often participates representing both the budgets and in some cases has the special knowledge of, and skill set that is responsible for trading derivatives. We're starting to see participants from risk management teams and also from overall business strategy organizations. Decision rights themselves, we do see a couple different styles adopted by the market. One is to have the expertise owner make the decisions on behalf of the wider group. One is to have the P&L owner make the final decisions and the other organizations try to have a full consensus or a majority vote style. The core team meets quite regularly, maybe every month, and the executive teams that provide oversight meet less, less infrequently, such as every quarterly basis with perhaps an annual session to approve the overall strategy that will be deployed for the next year. So John, when it comes to designing a commodity risk management strategy, are there any specific principles to take into consideration and embed in the model? We believe that the principle should reflect the overall values and culture of the business, but we do see a few recurring themes. Simplicity has to be one of them. Uh, there has to be an effective balance of control and speed with a simple process, governance model, and decision rights. Transparency is also very important. We expect a high level of transparency for all the cross-functional stakeholders that participate. Information and data sharing must ensure informed decision making. Commodities risk model should also be flexible. There needs to be flexibility around which risk mitigation tools and strategies are deployed, as well as any thresholds and governance protocols provided. Flexible processes must allow for disruptive and normal market circumstances. I think for those that work in commodities know, there's no such thing as normal. There needs to be clear accountability for all the strategies, both considered and rejected. And each step of the process has to have assigned responsibilities and accountabilities among the stakeholders involved. Collaboration, finally, is also very important. It's important to fully leverage internal capabilities, satisfy stakeholder concerns, and further develop expertise. And finally, John, the last question to you about commodity risk management in this podcast. What are the challenges in implementing a commodity risk management model, and how can companies overcome these challenges? I believe there are three challenges that businesses need to overcome. The first one is to recognize that volatility will continue to challenge operations. Commodity volatility is not temporary. It will impact earnings, but not necessarily growth. Total risk management is therefore critical to get right. Volatility also requires holistic price management capability. Most companies are not fully prepared for commodity risk. There is a strong need for more cross-functional teaming and given the global nature of commodity markets, a need for broader global alignment. Finally, there needs to be broad alignment among the different elements of the model so that the decisions taken at the strategy and objectives level manifest themselves all the way through the governance, the processes, the people, and the tools that the model is using. John, thanks ever so much for sharing your insight and knowledge on commodity risk management. I found that really interesting. So just to summarize, I picked out three points as you were talking on the topic that I thought were really uh, important to note. The first one was that volatility is at an all time high and is going to continue. Secondly, you mentioned that governance is an important part of a commodity risk management framework. And thirdly, when designing a, a commodity risk management strategy, the principle of simplicity is uh, key and companies need a balance of control and speed with regard to this. So on that note, I'd like to thank John Payatek for being my guest today. I'd also like to thank our production engineer Tom Klein based in San Francisco. 
Thank you for listening to this edition of The Wave of the Future. If you have any comments on this podcast or have a suggestion for a podcast topic that you'd like to hear, please share your thoughts via Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at ATKPAS. This has been an AT Carney Procurement and Analytics Solutions podcast production. Join us again soon for our next Wave of the Future podcast. Thank you.